Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dragon Lords, The Battle of Darion. It's a two-player skirmish card game in which you're going to be playing between a dragon rider and his dragon, along with his your opponent's dragon rider and dragon, and they're each of your own individual armies. You're going to be drafting a set of armies together, and then you're going to be drafting spells and other unique cards, and fighting against each other. There's going to be your space, there's going to be the middle space, and then your opponent's space. And you'll be moving using different actions in order to move, in order to attack, and use speci specifically uh, different card abilities uh, here. You're going to also try and defeat all of your opponent's cards on the field. Now they can fly, or they can be landed, you can mount certain cards with the dragons, as well as the fact that you can actually use all the different abilities on the cards that have different attacks and whatnot. And you're trying to destroy your opponent's cards. Uh, once you reduce your opponent's health to zero on each of their cards, they're going to be removed, and once all of their opponent's cards have been removed from the game, you're going to win. Let's Let's go and take a look at Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien. So here we have the components for Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien. It's going to come with this big box here of cards, as well as all the stuff you see here. You're going to have two different types of dice. You have attack and defense die. You're going to be getting different locations that you can go ahead and choose from. These are the locations here, and it's going to come with a big deck of them to choose from. And they all have their own unique special ability on the uh, deck that you can actually use. So I'm going to be here at the Forest of Demblaya, and this one here is the Altar of the Fallen King. And of course, each player is going to be able to draft and you're going to get a stack of cards to go ahead and set aside. Now there is going to be the good cards which are these guys here and then you've got neutral cards and then you've got evil cards and you're going to draft out 55 points along with item cards like the staff of fire here or this amulet of the phoenix. Uh, each player is going to choose between good or evil and then of course if you have both decks you, if you have two decks of the same type you can choose to have players play uh, two goods and two evils if you like but with the base game it's just one person plays good one person plays evil and they get 55 points with the items. Uh, after you're done doing that, you're going to then take your spell and order cards here, and you're going to draft, uh, not draft out, you're going to then um, deck build basically 10 and 10 and 20 and 20, which is equivalent to 20 cards and 20 points and 10 points and 10 cards, uh, depending on the decks. The spell deck is 10 and 10 and the orders deck is 20 and 20. On the bottom left is going to be the cost of the card. Some of them are going to be three, others are going to be zero. It just depends on the card. So if you have uh, five points left, you can go ahead and get a zero and another zero and then a three. Um, and that will be the equivalent of three cards for three points. So that's how that works, basically. And uh, they're going to also have a spell cost at the top. Um, let's see if I can find one for you here. Like this one here, this is called Stone Skin. It's going to have a cost of top right of uh, three, the ability, the cost of the card to draft it or to deck build it, and then uh, the symbol on the bottom left hand corner, or bottom right hand corner. So those are the cards. You're also going to get tokens here, and you're going to get burning symbols, mana potions, health potions, uh, electricity, uh, exhaustion. Uh, these are damage tokens here. Order tokens here which signify that the characters have been used. And then a plethora of other stuff here, such as binding and mounting and all this other good stuff. Uh, and of course, you get cards that are keys, which will tell you a reference as to what all the different uh, tokens do. You're also going to get a summon deck that you can go ahead and summon via mages. If you get certain spells, that allow you to summon maybe a fire elemental and earth elemental, great wolves or griffins. And then, last but not least, you're also going to get dice. And they're going to be two different types of attacking and defending dice that give you different abilities like that we'll talk about later. Let's Let's go up and tell you about how to play the game. You already saw down below the setup of the game. Of course, you're going to need to choose not only a dragon, but also a rider. And of course, you're going to have a good or evil character, uh, along with those neutrals that you can choose as well. And they have a cost at the top left-hand corner of them, and then of course, their magic ability at the top right. On the cards themselves, they're going to give you the status of the card, the type of the card, um, how much health they have, their defense value, how much uh, they need to roll to save, and then of course, their attack and possibly attack for ranged and for, uh, and for melee, along with all of their different abilities that are all going to require orders or even the crown symbol, which you can actually roll on certain die. If you roll a crown symbol like this here, you'll use the special ability of that card and then it will give you some kind of bonus. Also, you're going to be equipping cards. I already talked about deck building a little bit, and in, in which, for instance, these guys here, this is like the Gauntlet's Helm Plate and Greaves of the Dragon. These are set cards, which give you set bonuses, which are pretty cool. When you attach them to a character, you make sure that you have to, you can't attach two Greaves to the same character, two Gauntlets, but you can attach anything you want, provided it's not the same type of equipment. And some of them like these will give you set bonuses. So this one here says, uh, uni, uh, unit is immune to all negative conditions caused from breath weapons. So you're then gonna attach these together. So the 
the basic deck building I'd explain, but then you're going to set all the cards that you have drafted, put them all down in front of you in a row, along with your opponent, equip all the cards you want based on the equipment rules, drawing three cards of each type, the order deck and the spell deck, and then give yourself three HP potions, which look like this little HP, and then of course crystals. And crystals can be used to let you gain more cards by drawing them, or simply to use them during during the game. There's plenty of different things that they're going to be used for. Um, and you can get them by rolling dice when you're battling. Then the game's going to begin. You're going to choose a player to go first, and they're going to perform an, an order, which is basically like an action, it's simply taking one of their cards. They can choose to use um, it to move or to attack. You get two orders per character, and once you've gone ahead and used that order, you're going to simply place a token on that character, signifying that it has been exhausted. I'm oh, sorry, this token here is a little dragon token. It has been exhausted, and it can't be used until every other character has finished get, taking an order or taking orders. And some of them are going to require multiple orders, some of them are going to require one, and you'll be able to either do a range attack, a melee attack, some kind of movement, uh, some kind of equipping or, or spell, all that good stuff. Spells can also cost orders themselves, and some of them are going to be defensive and others are going to be offensive, depending on what you chose. After you perform a order on one of your characters, then your opponent will get to as well, and you'll go back and forth until all characters have been exhausted. Once that happens, you're going to then rinse and repeat, continuing the cycle until somebody has lost the game by removing all of their characters from the board. The fighting is pretty simple. It's going to tell you how many die you use to roll the fight and how many die you use to roll to defend. When your character gets hit, it takes a damage or a wound, and after it has no more uh, no more health left from all the wounds it has taken, it dies and is no longer in play. So that is the idea. Let me go ahead and show you down below a couple turns of play and a couple caveats. Back to the board again, and as you can see, we have went ahead and set up the game. This is one player. This is another player. These guys are the evil players, and these are the good. However, each uh, deck or cards can have neutral as well. This one has all evil, though, but this one here has a neutral unit, which is the high priest here. Got the head and set up the, we'll have these are the attack, and these are the defense die. And we went ahead, and what you do is you go through this deck, you choose two locations, right? And then you're going to shuffle them up and pick one and flip it over, and that will be your location for the game. So we had these both set up. This is going to give a shield to for all evil characters that start the game. So you'll be putting a shield token on each one of these guys. And you can use them whenever you're going to take a damage. You can use it, uh, the shield to block that. And this one over here says a shield for all elven characters. And, and half elves count. Any character that is either an archer or a uh, longbowman also is considered an archer. There's certain things that will require you to look at these different uh uh, these different classes, Undead, uh, Ancient Worm, Half-Elf, so on and so forth. You also are going to have these die here, the red, oh, so the red is attack, I believe, and then the, the blue are the uh, the uh, range, sorry, this is melee, this is range dice, which you'll be using here, which I'll explain in a second. So we'll go ahead and start it off, we'll let the good player go first, and the good player is simply going to choose one of the characters, and we'll go ahead and choose, oh, I don't know, how about the Necromancer? He's going to use two orders, one order is to simply move like that, uh, it can cost you one order to move, and then, of course, he can use another order to attack. Now, he can look at here and read what his abilities do. This says, search your, uh, search your spell deck and draw a spell and add it to your hand. Shuffle the spell deck. So he can go ahead and use his last order to simply draw a spell deck, a spell card from the spell deck. Or he can use it to attack. It's got a, a two melee and it's got an eight range. So he likes the range abilities more. So he's going to choose a character here to fight. And uh, he will choose, how about this elite archer? So you guys can see him better. I'll go ahead and flip him over like this. And the Elite Archer is a good warrior, plus a damage from Zone 1 attacks and minus a damage on the same zone attacks. Uh, so he's going to be simply be uh, get, getting rolled against. So he will take 6 and 7 and 8, and well as one of these guys here. Oh no, blue, sorry, blue for ranged. It tells you right there, 8 and 1 blue. And he's going to roll. It's pretty simple how combat works. You roll the dice, and then you're going to look at the player's uh, defense. This is a three plus for his defense, which means any attack over here is going to be a defense uh, uh, three plus. So these guys here, these don't count. These are twos and ones, so they'll get removed. And there's going to be five hits coming at this guy here along with the damage. And this guy is going to get to roll one defense die for each of the hits that went through. And he needs a six plus. Wow, he needs a lot in order to save himself. Yeah. Wow, this is a great roll, but it didn't matter because he needed 6 plus, and none of these are 6 plus, so all of these don't count, and he takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. Ow! He has 7 total health, so he's got 1 health remaining. 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, and six. You're gonna use these as uh, to determine the, the, the health total of your units. And this player is done. He's used his two actions. So he'll be placing tokens on this guy to signify that he's no longer gonna be used. After that, uh, he is done. His turn is over and it is now the other character's turn, the good guy's turn. And the good guy can select any of these guys he wants. For instance, I'll probably select this high priest here, which is pretty cool because he can use an order to remove all harmful conditions uh, from up to three units. He could also use an order to roll a die and heal a unit. Result heals self or another uh, unit within the zone. There are three zones. There's one, two, and three here. So he's going to use an order to heal this guy here. If he can, he'll take a die, d6, and he's going to roll. Ha! One damage removed. Ouch, not so good. That's okay, though. He's going to try it one more time. Let's see if he can get some more health off. Six! That's much better, which clears all of his wounds off. Powerful! But he's not going to be able to do that again because he is now also used his uh, his commands. He's frozen now. So it'll go back once again to this, uh, this player over here. Now what's also interesting about this game here is you can choose to mount units up. You can simply put them like that and that will mount them up. It's going to cost you a uh, an order. So it's going to cost you one order to, to attach these guys. And then you're going to go ahead and take this and place it on here, which signifies that it has been mounted. There's a bunch of different symbols here and you can use these cards to tell you what you need to do. So that's a, it's a, oh, airborne and mounted, sorry. So the mounted one is this one over here, which looks like this. So then he can go into the air, right? So that means he can be flying. And it tells you what they do. So if we look at this one here, the airborne one says that melee units cannot be cannot target any units that are in the air. Airborne units receive a defense for, uh, against rolls uh, that are range attacks. And knights mounted to an airborne dragon get three defense total against range attacks. Mounted has similar other attributes as well. So you can choose to go ahead and do that. And I think both of these are going to require an order, so this guy is going to be done as well. And it'll go back to this guy as well. Maybe he wants to do the same thing. He wants to mount his dragon up, which could be pretty useful for a later round, especially because it's hard to hit these guys when they're in the air. And back to this guy over here. He's going to simply, he can choose to move this guy up once more. And into the breach we go. We're going to hit this elite archer one more time because it does a lot of damage with the range attacks. So we'll take four... Five, six, seven, and eight, along with a blue. Yeah. All right, what do we got here? What do we got here? Need a three plus, need a three plus. Uh, so all of these guys are going to work. These aren't doing anything here, unfortunately. And then you got six on this guy here. He's got six. He needs to roll to defend it. And he's got a six up. That's going to stop one of them. But the rest are going to get through, doing five more damage to my poor little elite archer. So we'll go ahead and take these guys here. And there are also tokens that signify five as well. So it might, it'll be easier with that. So here you go, five. All right. And then, of course, he is also done. He's going to get an order token place. So that means he's frozen. And then, of course, we would continue with this guy here. And then after everybody has used all of their actions, they've all used their commands, then it's going to res result in everybody clearing and starting over again. Now, of course, you can choose to use orders to play cards. Like this one here says, uh, use at the start of a round to gain initiative. Or while defending, you may distribute damage to any friendly units in your zone. So that can be beneficial for you if you want to. Uh, maybe not have this guy take so much damage. Uh, add six die to the attack pool. That's pretty good, and it costs three, though. So you have to realize that that is important. This is a defensive card and these are ranged or melee cards. Of course, you've also got spells here too. And it tells you what type of characters can use these cards here. Like the aerial dive can be used by a dragon. The resist coal can be used by a cleric, mage, or a rogue. And fog of war can be used while defending. You can reroll one or more of your defense dice. Now you can choose to use these crystals here. They have a lot of purpose, but mainly they're going to be used to draw you additional cards. And you're going to be getting them when you roll these on the die here. This crown ability is going to activate your special attack. So if we were to clear this off and start another round again, of course, everything else remains except for, uh, everything remains including damage and mounted and all that kind of stuff. But if you were, you, so for instance, let's talk, take a look at this necromancer, right? If he was gonna use this guy, if it was his turn next, he was gonna use this guy, he will simply choose to attack again. He'll take his dice, he'll hit this guy here. And let's say, oh, I don't know, let's say he killed him. And not only did he kill him, um, but he also, uh, well, before he killed him, sorry, he rolled a, a crown here. Let's see, it's a blue, so we got a crown here. So before he killed him, well, this is actually not too good of a roll if that was the roll here. But 
he would say, okay, this is two here. This guy would get to roll his two dice here. Need no six pluses. That's two damage in. That brings him to a total of six, which means that he's going to look at this. What does this do? Well, this is Cursed Army. You get to draw a card from the summoning deck, which is over here. And if the card is an undead card, add it to your dice pool for this uh uh, for this unit for all attacks and defense. If monster is not undead, it will attack this unit and then vanish. Wow, so we'll flip over one of these guys here. Ooh, it got lucky, it's an undead, undead creature. So you're gonna take the attack of that unit, you're going to add it to this attack here. Bam, he's got his two more three pluses, which is gonna do two more damage, which then we have to be try to be blocked. Oh, that one extra damage got through, hitting this guy and killing this guy. So that is how useful the crown abilities are. They have special abilities, special bonuses that you can go ahead and use. You could also choose, instead of using, um, uh, inclu including this, the crown ability, but you could also look at these guys here. They all have different things here. This one here says, memorize, search your deck for a spell card. And then of course, these guys here, two actions. <laughs> Rule of Ombradon, perform an attack and and add wounded and poisoned to the result. Wow, that's really powerful. And of course, when you're attacking, if you hit this, the dragon, the dragon dies, this guy will fall down, he'll take damage. And these guys are both protected when they're up here like this. We can also take a look at these cards here, okay? These are attached to this specific character here. I have the same types that are attached here. There's tons of different, um, different item cards that you can use to attach different units. But with these guys, they all have uh, bonuses, right? So this one specifically is a set bonus one. It was one of my favorite ones, so that's why I picked it. But if you have all five of them, uh, Greaves, Plate, Gauntlets, Helms, oh, not the Demon Blade, just these four here, you can have a set bonus of two, three, and four, and they give specific abilities, and they all each have their own unique aspects to them as well, increasing this to a seven. So what happens when it has an armor value of seven? Well, a six is always going to hit no matter what, and a one is always going to fail. So it's important to remember that when you wrote, whenever rolling has a D&D &D aspect that no matter how much armor value they have, sixes will still go through and their health still stays the top left hand corner. So that's the basic idea of the game. As units die, you're going to have less actions to do on your turn. And whoever is the last person standing with any of their units is going to be the winner of the game. Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien. Let's come up and talk about it. Just before we get into the review, let's talk about mages and deck building. So if you include a mage into your or your retro or your army, you're going to be getting two additional spell cards and two additional spell power in order to use those cards, in order to put them in your deck. Like I said before, some of them are zero, some of them are three, so you can kind of deck build how you want, but with mages, it gives you more, more spells into your deck, which is really important, right? You want to have that specifically with mages because a lot of cards are going to require either mages, clerics, and rogues. I've noticed that's the biggest one. Of course, there are warriors as well as knights that are included, and even some dragon cards as well. But for the most part, mages are going to be the ones using a lot of the spells. So that is a good additive to deck building. I've also mentioned to you that whenever you roll a six, it's a success, and whenever you roll a one, it's a failure. There's tons of different tokens, and depending on the tokens, they're going to do different abilities here. There is burning, there's days, there's free and lightning, uh, airborne and mounted, which I talked about, poisoned and wounded, and I think there's a couple other ones, as well as binding. Whenever you summon a unit, and you can summon units from the spells, you'll actually take a unit from the deck and you'll put it down into your area, and then it'll count as a unit that is bound to you, the character that has summoned it. And certain characters, only certain characters can summon units, mainly the mages. You put a bound on this and a bound on your guy, and that means that they're going to be linked, so that's pretty important as well. Um, and that's the basic idea, right? Going back and forth is a simple strategic tactical game. It has the little deck building aspect into it, and then it has that back and forth um, tactical aspect where you're moving your characters around, getting lucky with these bonus die here, using this skull to do the uh, uh, damage, using this here, this is the dragon that will give you an extra order, and then the crown, which is a special ability. And I think almost every character, if not every character, has a special ability. Yes, they all do. Uh, you can also get a blank, which is kind of sucky. Um, but that's the basic idea. It has a Warhammer-like combat system in which you're going to be rolling dice, and then you're going to be checking to see if they hit, and then rolling defense based on those hits and checking to see if they block, and then the rest of the damage goes through. And then also calculating any armor and or items that have been attached to characters, like this demon blade here. It says plus two damage whenever it attacks good units. Ooh, wow, that's good. Add two dice to your attack dice pool. You may uh, re-roll up to two dice when attacking. Also good. You can also use commands on some of these guys here, like disarm, perform an attack if the attack is successful. Enemy unit loses three attack dice on their next attack. 
Uh, slashing attack. For two commands, perform one attack. If the attack is successful, target becomes wounded. This is very good. Really good. You can only have one sword um, on each character. You can't have double. You can't, you can't rock double demon blades. <laughs> it's a little overpowered otherwise. So what do I think about the battle uh, Darien? The, uh, sorry, Dragon Lords. Battle of Darien. Well, first of all, the game is a simple tactical style card game. Uh, I had a, this is a re-release, -re which is, you know, I had to try out the original version of the game. And this one has... A lot more going for it as far as simplicity yet still does not take away from the fact that you have a ton of different options in the game a ton of different deck building aspects and it's made the deck building a lot simpler it's included a lot of a lot more new cards it's included a lot of new items and a lot of new units if you like dragons if you like the fantasy theme and if you like tactic games this is definitely a solid choice if you like deck building to begin with it's also really nice especially for a two-player game you're just simply gonna go back and forth picking cards out maybe you both want to be Bad, then you need to get two sets of the game. If you don't mind one being good, one being bad, then that's another aspect as well. And then, of course, adding a nice, it's interesting, you get to choose two of your favorite locations, you shuffle them up and pick one of them, and then you're gonna get to use that location for the entire game. I like that. The dice here are a nice little aspect, little custom dice. You can get special abilities from rolling them. You can get these uh, little crystals here, which give you special, specific abilities, as well as the ability to draw additional spell cards. And then, of course, spell cards and command cards that will allow you to do different things throughout the game. And let me tell you there's tons of them this game has no uh, if nothing else it has a ton of variety in it all these cards all these little cards here are going to give you uh this is just for the spell deck and you also have the command deck here tons of them right for a two-player game and then of course all of these cards are going to be included for uh the deck building aspect with neutral good and evil so there's a lot to be looking at and of course then you got the summon deck and there's probably still more cards too that have yet that i've yet to see because this is still a prototype the tokens as you see are paper so they're not they're going to be a thicker uh, cardboard i imagine and um the cool aspect too of these i like these these are new the whole uh, two set three set and four set aspects I, it reminds me of world of warcraft and that kind of stuff and i do like the fact that i can choose maybe i want a two set maybe i want all of it of course i, I wanted all of it and i got both two of the same set for different characters because I felt like they're so strong and I like that aspect. And then the Necromancers. Interesting abilities on cards are cool. I like the fact that this guy can pop a creature from the summoning deck and he might get lucky and bam, that guy's gonna fight for him for a turn and then disappear. Otherwise, oh no, I summoned a dragon and that dragon is not an undead, which means he's not gonna help me. So he's gonna hit me in the face and then he's gonna run away. And of course, the mounted knights and the dragons are very, very, very powerful, right? If so basically the idea is, if you like fantasy games, tactical style games, movement oriented tactics, you're gonna like this game. Uh, the artwork is fantastic in this game. It is yet to, uh, un it has yet to disappoint me in any of the art, 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 art pieces here. I love them. I'll show you a couple pieces up here because it's just great. Uh, and the gameplay works very well. It's very simplistic as far as how it works. You're gonna roll, check, roll, check, take that damage. Um, if you don't like games that are tactical, if you don't like the movement base, like you got three different specific movement areas going back and forth, it has almost a uh, one of those app-like card game styles or feels. This game can definitely be played um, online, I think. This is one of those games that you could actually go back and forth on, uh, on an app or whatever and play it. It, it would work very well. Uh, the dice aspect is nice, and it, it flows. It's really nice. Uh, this is definitely a, a better version than the last time when I, I've seen this game, so I'm very uh, excited to see the campaign come out, and I want to see what other new stuff is coming out for it, because I really, really like the deck building aspect of the game. Anyway, the choice is up to you. Go ahead and check out the description below if you're interested, and you can take a look at the game on Kickstarter. Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this game, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps, as well as checking out the Dragon Lords game we got over here. Uh -huh, the Battle of Darien, a wonderful two-player tactical card game with a fantasy style and beautiful artwork. All right, uh, as well as checking out our site, unfilteredgamer.com. It has a blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list as well. We're giving away the game Fire of Eidolon, and we're giving away Rising Sun, the the basic like organizer for the game. So if you already have Rising Sun, you want the broken token organizer, go ahead and check out our site. It's got all that stuff on there for you. As well as check out the Giveaway Geek at everythingboardgames.com. Two great guys that have tons of great content for you. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to fire-breathing, dragoning you later.